I'm standing for the first time in six months. Anyways, today we're gonna be looking at horror films. I wanted to make this video as an introduction for non-horror fans to make sure that you try out every single horror subgenre that exists. So today I'm gonna be recommending films from every and each of the different subgenres. I'm gonna be picking one or two films. I set up a couple of rules, like for example, I'm gonna pick in films just from my DVD collection. So I will have physical copies of each film that I'm talking about today with me, besides maybe one or two exceptions. Oh my God, stop fucking lying. We'll see, we'll see later on. I wanted to talk about films that I haven't talked about before. I wanted to go a bit more niche. So that's why sometimes when it comes to the best films that I recommend to start with when it comes to the subgenre, it will not be a classic within the genre, but it will be one of my favorites. Body horror is one of my favorite subgenres, and mostly because it has a lot of interesting things going on when it comes to... <laughs> Psychologically speaking, what is our relationship with our own body? And uh, the whole idea behind body horror is uh, being terrified of the idea of not being in control of your body and seeing it transform. So I decided to go for Videodrome and I will try for each subgenre to actually give you a classic recommendation from the 80s or the 70s and a more contemporary interpretation of the subgenre. Honestly, Cronenberg is a master when it comes to the body horror subgenre. Most of his filmography could go into that, but Videodrome, I feel like it's one of his most intriguing but also accessible works and when it comes to my recommendation for a more contemporary interpretation of that genre i will be recommending slither james gunn slither which is a super creepy film and that really explores once again those body horror themes and at the same time you've got an alien invasion going on at the same time i feel like there is a really fine line in between horror and comedy and especially when revisiting films from the 80s from the 70s or from the 60s you'll find out that a lot of things when it comes to the special effects and when it comes to the performances as well they have not aged really well it ends up being almost interpreted as a satire from our own perspective nowadays Some people could get really immersed into the 80s vibes and other people would find it completely hilarious. I feel like the most important thing is films that manage to do both great. I feel like there is a slightly small nuance in between comedy horror and comedy parody. For example, Shaun of the Dead, I think it's a comedy parody film. It's mostly commenting on the zombie horror tropes and giving it a bit of a British spin. What's the matter, David? I'm taking a shortcut before. For me, a horror comedy is something that manages to scare you, but also make you laugh at the same time. I think you definitely need to go for Cabin in the Woods, which is a great, great, great satire horror comedy. Or my other recommendations would be The Voices. The Voices is also a really, really great, weird horror comedy. Mr. Whiskers, he makes me do bad things. You totally stopped taking the pills, didn't you? Don't. When it comes to the thing, you could put it under sci-fi, you could put it on the body horror as well, but I feel like at the end of the day, this is really a film about alien invasion and an alien creature trying to survive. that I decide to do a video like this. My contemporary suggestions when it comes to the horror creature subgenre will be The Descent. It's a really claustrophobic film that takes place during a climbing expedition. This is one of those films that I think it's a really 
good introduction to the creature subgenre because it feels very real. This idea of finding new weird creatures that actually habit those places that you really don't want them to escape and get into the real world. Hey folks, this is Patrick from the editing room and something that I actually forgot to mention when it comes to The Descent is that it's a really good movie when it comes to just the writing and the main characters. There are not that many horror films who feature a group of women who are not cheerleaders, who, who are not uh, being saved by their significant other, especially when you think about films like Predator or Aliens. Very often when it comes to creature films, they tend to pair them up with very masculine men. Just to say that The Descent is a breath of fresh air when it comes to its main characters. The next subgenre will be the found footage genre. I know there are a lot of people who actually see it as a shooting technique instead of a subgenre, but I don't necessarily agree, especially if the found footage aspect is part of the narrative. When you think about Cannibal Holocaust, for example, it's one of those films where it's all about trying to retrieve this found footage film to find out what happened to the crew who disappeared. Wreck is a great, great, great film. If you're scared of the dark, you will definitely be scared of Wreck. And I find that the found footage really works in favor of it. And there are a lot of other things going on when it comes to hauntings and possessions. But I find that this is a really good example of how to exploit the found footage subgenre well. I am going to remind you in advance that I'm very sorry and I apologize. <laughs> The next subgenre is the haunting subgenre, and it's a subcategory that very often gets put together with either possession or supernatural, occult, and witchcraft subgenre. I find that the haunting term to be a really, really good term when it comes to putting all those things together. If you want a good recommendation that will definitely haunt your dreams for the next few weeks it's the japanese original version of ringu it's not necessarily incredibly scary but i find that this version here works really well mostly because it, it looks real it, it is shot almost like a documentary style and it, it really reminds me of films like the exorcist where you really go deep into this investigation and the horror aspects are just a small facet of it and if you want something that is more recent i would definitely recommend robert edgar's the witch What's the like the taste of butter a pretty dress What's the like to live deliciously yes it's not really scary to the extremes there are not many jump scares for example which is something that i don't really like i'm not a huge fan of jump scares so I feel like if you're introducing yourself to the genre, The Witch is a good start. Horror Possession, it's those kind of films like The Exorcist where there is an actual demon that is trying to possess a person instead of a place. So let's have a look. I wanted to recommend Hereditary, but at the end of the day, oops, where am I going? You're going nowhere. I got you for three minutes. I've talked about the hereditary for way too long and I didn't want to recommend Insidious either because I feel like a lot of people have seen it. I thought of a film that uh, was not really well received at the time mostly because it was a weird film and uh, the audience was expecting something completely different and it's Jennifer's Body. It has a very interesting feminist uh, interpretation within it and uh, when it comes to Megan Fox as well and her career she was a really huge fan of this film even though horror fans completely hated it just because they didn't understand it. The next subgenre will be the psychological horror subgenre and I feel like there are a lot of different films that could fall into this subcategory especially because anything from body horror or possession even could go into the psychological subgenre. For uh, my old-time recommendation I will put here 
the wicker man the original wicker man of course which is an incredibly weird film and experience it is a bit slow i agree i feel like this is one of those films that like even if you're not a horror fan you could definitely find some things interesting about it i make a bit of a distinction for me when it comes to home invasion when it comes to slashers and when it comes to serial killers i like to put together home invasion and serial killer if you think about films like silence of the lambs for example or films like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, which is an incredibly weird film. It almost looks like a documentary or a found footage, footage film. I feel like the most disturbing thing about this film is that uh, the, the performance that we get from Michael Booker is incredible and he really s manages to sell that idea of um, being a serial killer who literally doesn't give a fuck about who or whatever he kills. <laughs> It's not uh, here. It must be here then. The prophecy is true. Yes, it is here. Maniac, which is a remake of the 80s film and it's an incredibly weird and fucked up film that is shot mostly from a first person point of view. Please don't scream. You're so beautiful. Sorry. The next subgenre is gonna be the slasher subgenre that I was talking about before. For me, there are a lot of different rules when it comes to the slasher genre. First of all, it stars a very iconic kind of killer. Very often, it gets sequelized and it becomes a huge franchise, or at least the killer becomes quite iconic when it comes to the look itself. And very often, they're wearing masks as well. The victims are very often teenagers, but when it comes to new slashers, it's not necessarily true because we've seen that it's grown up to, uh, for example, college graduates or people in their slightly 30s for example oh. when it comes to a recommendation that I will be making so when it comes to my absolute recommendation when it comes to the slasher genre would be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and its killer Leatherface this is a really intense film. For me, this is one of those films that really transcends the horror genre. It's incredibly well edited. The cinematography is amazing. The grain in this film is so beautiful to look at. The ending is so beautiful and so cathartic. It has been deconstructed in so many different ways and I studied it myself when I was back in film school. I love your next because it really subverts your expectations and it really goes beyond the conventions of the slasher genre. One of the biggest rules when it comes to slashers is the presence of a final girl, which we have here in this film. The next subgenre will be the splatter subgenre or splatter or exploitation subgenre as it was called more in the 80s and 70s and 60s. It's a series of really weird film where basically you have fun watching other people die. And very often it's very gory and very often it's very bloody and I find like for me a very good distinction in between the next few subgenres that I'm going to be talking about is that when it comes to the splatter subgenre or the exploitation subgenre I feel like there is almost some kind of comic relief when it comes to the way that these people die as it like you see it coming you know what's going to happen very often it's quite fast as well so it's not torture like we'll see in other subgenres, I decided to go for Final Destination 2 mostly because the first one some people could find it quite slow. The second one really picks up the pace and the actors are much better as well and the deaths are definitely more creative and it's something that we enjoy when it comes to the splatter subgenre. The next two subgenres I'm actually gonna be 
presenting them together because they're very related and it's the torture porn subgenre and the rape and revenge subgenre. When it comes to the torture porn subgenre it's this weird trend that uh, we've been getting in the last uh, 20 years or so when literally you just watch a film and you you're supposed to enjoy and being disgusted mostly at people being tortured. So you've got the Soul franchise, you've got Elia Roth Hostel, you've got films like uh, the French uh, Martyrs. The Human Centipede technically is one of those as well. But uh, within that horror subgenre, I feel like uh, if you've seen the Soul films, then uh, there you've got your recommendation because those ones I feel like are not as disturbing as the other ones. But uh, I'd rather talk to you about the Rape and Revenge film because I feel like that could be a good introduction. Talk about the French film Revenge, which is a really, really, really great rape and revenge uh, film. There is a huge discussion behind this subgenre. Some people call it feminist, some people call it the complete opposite. And I don't really know where I fall in this debate, besides the fact that it's kind of a really awful kind of subgenre. At the end of the day, it's also cathartic to see people who have been sexually abused, them actually getting back at their perpetrators because it's something that in, every, in everyday life maybe doesn't happen as often. Maybe that could be uh, an angle for you to explore this subgenre and I really recommend this one because it's not as brutal as other rape and revenge stories like uh, a spit on your grave for example which is really disgusting at some points and some non-horror fans could find it really awful. We're finally getting towards the end of this video. I have two final subgenres which are technically um, subgenres of the horror creature subgenre but I like to put them here mostly because I love these two subgenres and the first one will be the vampire film and here I have two incredible recommendations. One will be Fright Night. The original Fright Night which is an incredibly weird vampire film with a lot of practical effects. And then if you want something contemporary, where would it be? I think it would be here. If you want something contemporary, then I would definitely go with... I actually really like the comic book as well of this film and it's 30 Days of Night. 30 Days of Night is an incredibly bloody film. For example, if you're adjusted to vampires looking really pretty and sparkly, like in Twilight, I really recommend 30 Days of Night. If you want vampires, they really, really, really look like monsters. These are disgusting vampires. I, I feel like they have their own language as well and they speak in this weird guttural way. <laughs> My final subgenre will be the zombie subgenre. And a lot of people divide it into another category. Some people would call it fast zombies and slow zombies. Other people would call it the undead and the virus. One that I really recommend, that will surprise a lot of you if you're a fan of Peter Jackson, especially knowing Lord of the Rings, it's Brain Dead. Brain Dead is an incredibly gory and fun zombie film. Uh, it's definitely not the kind of zombie films that you're used to seeing, mostly because it takes place in a very limited kind of space. There, is, there are so many incredible practical effects in this film. I find it quite funny as well, so if you want to add another angle to that kind of zombie film. I could have chosen any one of the George Romero classics, but I feel like once you watch one of them, you have to watch all of them and they all have different things to bring to the table. And I went for 28 weeks later when it comes to my recommendation. I didn't choose 28 days later because I find 28 days later to be a really interesting spin, of course, in the zombie subgenre, but I find that it the first act and the third act are incredibly strong and the middle part is just way too slow for a zombie film. 28 weeks later kind of solves that problem and everything is perfect for the entirety of the film. I know this will be a very controversial take but I don't care. 
your here's a healthy breakfast option you should kill your mom here's why women never fuck you here's how you can build a bomb which power ranger are you take this quirky quiz obama sent the immigrants to vaccinate your kids i think that is basically it those are all my recommendations for non-horror fans i definitely want to make more videos like this because i love the horror genre and this made me realize there are actually a lot of films that I love that are not part of my collection that I haven't bought yet, that I haven't managed to find the time to buy. Let me know in the comments what's your favorite horror subgenre. Let me know if you've seen any of these films or you'll definitely be checking them out after having seen this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it always helps. I'm Patrick and this is Torn Apart.